Welcome to the C interview guide from in 28 years. In this interview guide, we covered more than 200 questions related to C interviews. We covered a varied range of topics starting from basics like variables, expressions, functions, moving on to complex ones like pointers, structures, arrays, preprocessor directives, and a lot of other such topics. In this interview guide, we focus a lot on understanding what happens in the background. For example, when we talk about pointers, we don't just answer interview questions. We look at how different things are stored in memory and then understand how pointers makes it easy to access them. Welcome to this interview guide. We are sure that you would find it really useful. Let's get started. In this section 1 on variables, you would talk about different topics related to variables. What are the different types of variables? Automatic, external, static and register. Then we would look at what is meant by the scope of a variable. What is meant by lifetime of a variable? We would also look at how variables are stored in memory. And then we would compare declaration versus definition of variables. Automatic variables are those variables which we create inside functions. So here, inside this function, I'm creating a variable i, I'm creating a variable j, I'm creating a variable sum. Inside this add function, there's a variable sum created with a value a plus b. These variables inside these functions are called automatic variables. You can assign something called an auto int i is equal to 7, j is equal to 7, you can do something of that kind. It doesn't really make a difference. Even if you don't give anything of this kind, these are automatic variables. So basically any variable which is inside a function and which does not have a static before it. So if you don't have a static before it, then it becomes, there is no static before this. So this is an automatic variable. The important things about automatic variables are that if I don't assign a value to it, let's say I just say int i comma j, then they are assigned some garbage value. So the automatic variables are assigned garbage values. If we don't assign anything to them. The second thing is in this function, let's say I call this function two times. Let's say I'm calling the add function two times. In these kind of situations, what would happen is the value for this automatic variable is not retained between the function calls. So once the first function call for add is completed, once first the function add is called, add is executed, and once add completes execution, the all the variables, all the automatic variables in here are removed from memory and completely refreshed. So when the function is called again, again I'm calling this function in line 9, the new sum variable would be created. So a new variable sum is created and then the calculation would begin. So the automatic variables, the values of the automatic variables are not retained between function calls. So even if I call the same function twice or thrice or four times, it would be created and initialized every time. So this variable sum, every time the add function is called, the variable sum is created and it's initialized with whatever values are passed for a and b, they are summed up and initialized. If let's say I did sum is equal to zero, then this initialization would happen every time this function is called. So if I call the add function 10 times, then the sum would be initialized to 0 10 times. The value of the sum variable will not be retained between the function calls. That's an automatic variable. You can leave, you can think of an automatic variable like this. The automatic variable is tied to the function where it is. So this automatic variable sum is tied to this function add. Only while this function is active, the sum is 
available. It's active. That's the lifetime of this particular variable. Once you go out of this function, the sum variable is no longer available. It's completely taken out of memory and the value is also not retained at all. So that is basically what an automatic variable is. In the next video, we would discuss about other kinds of variables. In this video, let's talk about an external variable. This is a function main. I'm creating a variable outside the function. So I'm creating a variable which is int extern variable, which is outside the function main. This is what is called an external variable. Anything which is declared outside a function and not having the keyword static. So when this static keyword is not there, then this becomes an external variable. You cannot use an auto keyword on a external variable. If I compile this, I would get an error. So you can see that there's a error in the project. This is not allowed. An external variable outside a function should either be static or an external variable. So anything outside the function. So this is not inside a function. So there is no, if I had a function around it, let's say there was a ink do something and this is inside a function, then this is no longer a external variable. This is becoming the automatic variable for this particular function. But when a variable is outside the functions like this, then this is an external variable. The important thing about external variable is that the external variable is available in all the functions after it. So if let's say I want to use main and I want in main, I want to use this value of the external variable. I can do that external variable is equal to 10. This is allowed. Let's say there's another function in here. Let's say there's another function called dummy. I don't care what the name of this is. Let's say there's another function called dummy. Even in this function, I would be able to use the external variable. So if you see this program would compile and run without a problem because the external variable is available for all the functions inside that particular thing and also in other C classes. So if there was another C class where I want to make use of this external variable, you need to do a little bit of thing called a declaration. But once you do that declaration, then it's allowed to use that particular thing. There's one other the tricky part about an external variable that we'll discuss right now. So if let's say the external variable was not declared here, but it was defined here. So below the main function and I try to compile this, you'd see that I'm getting an error. The reason I'm getting an error is because the external variable is defined after the main. And if I want to use the external variable in the main, then I have to do something called a declaration. So I have to declare external int extern variable. So what I'm telling here is somewhere outside, not in this function main, but somewhere outside in one of the classes, in not sorry, in one of the programs, there's a variable called extern variable declared. I want to make use of that variable in here. This is what is called declaration. So this is declaration of an external variable and this is definition. We will discuss a little bit about declaration and definition at a later point in time when we look at what is the difference between declaration and definition. A definition allows, a definition provides storage as well. So here, a memory location is allocated to the external variable. Here, all that we are doing in declaration here in main is that we are saying there's an external variable somewhere with this name, go and find it for me. Now, if I compile this program, you would see that it goes through fine and there's no compilation error because this is 
declared and this is available. So let's say there's a hello world C project dot C here. In this, we are having an external external variable. So we have an external variable with the name extern variable. And I would want to create a new C file, let's say dummy.c, where I want to use this variable. The way you would do that is by saying this. So before using this variable, you need to declare it saying extern int extern variable and make sure that you include the C file in there and then you'd be able to use it. So those are things about external variables. So the most important thing about an external variable is once you have defined an external variable, after that it's available for everything in that particular file. So all the functions after that would have it. But if any function which is in another file or which is before this definition wants to use the external variable, then you have to declare it by using extern int extern variable. Most important thing about an external variable is even though it makes it easy because I don't need to pass the external variable to this function because it's already available, this function is able to access it. So it avoids passing values as parameters or arguments, but it's not a good practice because if there are a lot of external variables in a program, it becomes very, very difficult to understand. So the recommendation is to avoid external variables as much as possible. So there you go. That's basically what external variables are. The next thing which we will discuss is the scope of a variable. What is scope of a variable? The scope of the variable is the place in which you can access the values of that particular variable. For example, let's just try a int i. So what is the scope of this variable? The scope of this variable is just this particular function. This is an automatic variable. So this automatic variable is available only in this particular function. If I create another function, let's say I'm creating an int dummy function. And I try to access this variable and try to set a value to it here. What would I get? I would get a compilation error. You can see that error exists. In this project. So an automatic variable inside a function can be used only within that particular function. This is its scope of an automatic variable. However, if let's say this was not an automatic variable and it was an external variable, int i, I'm creating an int i in here, an external variable, what would happen? You can see that it compiles. I can even use it here, i is equal to 3, without a problem. This would compile without a problem because an external variable, the scope of an external variable is the entire program after it's declared. So if, however, if I put it here, this is, is an external variable still because it's outside, but still it gives me an error. If I want to use this in main, because this is not in scope here, to bring it in scope, I would need to put an extern in, I am declaring an external variable in here. And now it would be able to access the variable, no compilation error. So, an external variable is available throughout. Let's see if a static variable is available throughout. Static int i. So, will I be able to ac access the i in here? So, I'm creating a static variable in here. And will I be able to access it in main? Let's compile and see. Nope, this is not enough and the reverse also. So if I put a variable in here and I try to access it in dummy, nope, that's not allowed to. A static variable is allowed only in the function where it's defined. So the rules are same. The scope of a static variable is same as an automatic variable. When we discuss about lifetime, there'll be a difference between a static and an automatic variable. However, in terms of scope, in terms of where it's allowed to access the value for a static variable, they are the same. So basically an external 
variable is external variable is available throughout a static or a register or an automatic variable is only available in the function where it's declared that's about the scope of different types now let's discuss now about the lifetime of variables what is the lifetime of variables lifetime of variables is basically the time during which their values are retained so if i declare an int i is equal to 3 this is an external variable right so for an external variable the values retained through the lifetime of the program so from the start of the program to the end of the program the values retained the same is the case for a static variable. The static variable is created at the start of the program. So the i variable here is created, the static var here is created at the start of this program and it is removed from memory only when the entire program is completed execution. So for a static variable and an external variable, the lifetime of the variable is throughout the execution of the program. However, uh, external variable will be available in other functions. So this is an external, I is an external variable. I can use it in other functions without a problem. This would compile. However, if I access a static variable from another function in here, it would give me an error. Error. The static variables are not accessible in other functions, but still they exist in memory. So their lifetime is throughout the program. However, their scope, the scope of their usage is only in the function where they are defined. So external variables can be used everywhere and their lifetime is throughout the life of the program. Static variables lifetime is throughout the run of the program however they will not be able they will not be available for use outside the function where they are defined the automatic variables in variation so let's create an automatic variable int j or int k and here i create another automatic variable int max these are automatic variables the lifetime of the automatic variables is only during the lifetime of execution of this function so once main starts executing, k is created. Once it completes execution, k is removed from memory. Similarly for marks, once dummy starts executing, marks is in memory. And once dummy completes execution, marks is removed from memory. So the lifetime of automatic variables is the lifetime of execution of the function in which they are declared. So that's about the lifetime of the automatic variables. So I hope that's clear. The, the lifetime of external and static variables is equal to the lifetime of a program, whereas the automatic variables lifetime is just the execution time of the method in which they are declared. There are things like blocks where the lifetime gets further restricted to the block where they are declared. Thanks for watching this video. Until next video, bye bye. Let's assume that I am having a variable i with a value 5. So I have a variable int i is equal to 5. The computer memory is nothing but a set of locations which can store values. Here I am assuming that the size of an integer is 2 bytes. So similarly, I am showing memory locations of 2 bytes each. So we have a memory location of address 6000, 6002, then 6004, probably a lot of memory locations like this. So in the memory of any computer, you would have memory locations which would have a name assigned to them. So here the address of this memory locations is 6000. 
the address of this one is 6002. So at some other point, there might be something with an address 7000, 7002, 7004, and so on. So this is how the values are stored in memory. By default, when you start up a computer, when before we start running the program, everything would have a garbage value. Some value would be there. It's unrelated to the program at all. So there is some garbage value in each of these locations. So what happens when I do int i is equal to 5? The first thing which is done is a particular memory location is assigned to this variable i. So let's assume that this 6000 is assigned to i. So this 6000 is assigned to i. And what is the value I'm putting in i? i is equal to 5. So earlier there would be a garbage value. But now because I assigned a value 5, this becomes 5. So when I say int i is equal to 5, i is assigned some memory location. So some memory location, let's assume it's 6000. It can be 7000 or anything as well. In that particular memory location, what value is stored? The value which is stored is 5. So, basically i here refers to the memory location 6000. And when I refer to this i, whatever values in present in here will be returned back. So, let's say instead of i is equal to 5, I did i is equal to 78. So, what would have happened is in this memory location, the value which would have been stored would have been 78. So, this is basically how things are stored in memory. Let's say in addition to int i is equal to 78, I'm declaring another variable j is equal to 25. What would happen? What would have happened here is that j would have been assigned some other location, let's say 7000. j is assigned 7000 and the value there would be made to be 25. So this is how values are stored in memory. This is how simple variables are stored in memory. Next question we'll look at is what is the difference between a declaration and the definition of a variable? As we all know, a C variable has to be declared before it's used. What is the difference between a declaration and a definition? A typical automatic variable like i, int i is equal to 5. This is both a declaration and definition. How is it so? Typically, a declaration is something where we tell what is the name of a variable, what is the type of the variable, but we don't allocate any storage to it. So we don't allocate any memory to it. But a definition is one where we really allocate memory for a variable. For an automatic variable in a situation like this, int i is equal to 5, this is both a declaration and the definition because it gives it a name, it declares the type, and also it allocates memory to it. The perfect example of a declaration would be that of an external variable. In this function main, I'm declaring extern int extern variable. This, what this line is doing is there is some external variable declared somewhere. This might be in this file or some other file. There is some variable somewhere. Go and get it. This is what is a real good example of a declaration because here we don't really assign any memory to it. So here we are not creating the memory for external variable at all. All that we are doing is declaring it. So we are saying this is the declaration. So this is the variable. It's present in memory. I mean, it's declared in some other program. I mean, it's defined in some other program. Storage is already allocated to it. Go and get it. That's basically the best example for a declaration. The other good example for a declaration is the declaration of a structure. Here, in this particular example, struct point int x int y. Here, all that we are doing is we are declaring a structure called point. We are saying a point typically contains x and y, but we are not really creating instances of it. That's a very good example of a 
declaration of a structure. And here we are creating an instance of this particular structure. So this is the definition of P1. So here we are defining a variable. Here we are defining the variable for that particular structure. So this is where we create a structure in memory. So once we say point P1 is equal to 1, comma 2, something is created in memory, some memory location is created, the values are stored, and this is the definition. And this is the declaration. So a declaration is where we define what is the type of a particular variable, what is the name, and the definition is the point where we allocate memory to it. Though it's very difficult to distinguish these two parts in certain things like automatic variables, it might be clearer, for example, in structures or external variables. I hope the difference between a declaration and definition for variables is clear now. Until the next video, bye. Let's end this section on variables here. In this section, we learned about different variable types. What is initialization? How are variables stored in? What is declaration of a variable?